this is cool. Well, uh, I guess, Jim, if you want to um, tell us about the bus and bus lights. Should we have Jim in front? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was thinking the same Let's thing. Get away from the yeah, we'll get over here. We got maybe a shot of you taking the dipstick out. Well, let me. I'll people. just let me just close the side door here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. My mom will have Brendan hold. There we go. Jim Cleary and I'm a manufacturer's rep for a Western Saddle Company and uh, I travel around the six state area up here in the upper Midwest and sell Western Saddles and equipment to uh, different dealers uh, in my territory. That's kind of an interesting job. Um, oh, am I? That's all right. Yeah, it's okay. a, yeah, um, and, and put, was it your decision to travel on a bus or was that? Well, yeah, it was. Um, Traveling in a bus, being as I'm on the road about 200 nights a year, over 200 nights a year, um, I wanted something that I could travel in that was comfortable for me and uh, that I could carry some product in. So I bought this thing uh, about three years ago and redid it. It took me about two and a half years to rebuild it. Uh, I stripped it pretty much right down to the bare frame and, and uh, put a new interior and took out all the bus windows and reskinned it and did that type of thing to it. And, uh, it's really, uh, it's nice to have a home to live in when you're out on the road. What, does the bus have a name? Well, yeah, actually I call it Georgette. Uh, I named it after my old girlfriend because she was uh, high maintenance and a lot of trouble too, so. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, way to travel and and uh, I pretty, I really enjoy living in it on the road. It's nice to have a home. What is it? What does something like this cost? What is that? Well, uh, these old buses themselves are not that expensive. I mean, you can buy. This is a 1964 GMC 4106. Is uh, it's a official designation. Um, this bus used to run from New York City to uh, Florida in the Greyhound fleet, and. Uh, they didn't get rid of it till it had over two million miles on it, so I'm sure it's got almost three million miles on it now. Uh, of course, it's been completely rebuilt, so uh, it's got a, a newer motor in it, and you know, all new wheels and tires and rims and brakes and all that type of thing. So it's in uh, it's in really good shape now. But uh, you can spend oh, you know, depending on how fancy you want to get when you're converting an older bus like this, you can spend anywhere from fifty to hundred thousand dollars pretty easily. So this is an antique bus. Well, almost, yeah. Um, there was some things that were done to it that would update it, like there's up on the top that there's some fiberglass caps that were put on it, and uh, you know, newer style rims and tires, and and uh, of course we took out the bus windows. And, put on new heated remote control mirrors and different things like that that make it uh, more comfortable to drive and, and uh, more or less just have updated it from the 64 version. <laughs> any any, fun story, any uh, interesting stories you remember from on the road? Any favorite stories from being on the road with us? Well, uh, I guess just different things, picking people up, you know, talking with different people. Um, last winter, I picked up a, a lady and her kids that had broke down out in the middle of uh, South Dakota and um, called them to the nearest town. And just as we were leaving, uh, the little boy said, do you mind if I get my pet iguana? And Because uh, they were afraid he was going free to freeze to death. So, uh, you know, he went back to the car and brought this big iguana and the iguana was running around the bus. And, and uh, you know, just different things like that happen now and then. Uh, Three weeks ago, going from Denver to Kansas City, I 
blew the top of the motor just about right off of it and had to get towed back to Denver and uh, you know put a new blower on the motor and different things so I mean it's uh, it's a constant source of, uh, of amazing things that happen and well, I just uh, just found that out yesterday when I pulled in here last night. Yeah, he's got a really nice rig. <laughs> How did you find out that you're on a bus? Well, I guess I'm parked here next to him, and uh, that was really the only way I knew it. Now I, I'm familiar with the company that built his bus, Custom Coach, because I get a magazine for bus converters, and uh, Custom Coach does a lot of advertising in there, and. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a real beautiful, beautiful machine he's got there. What, uh, what can you show us inside your bus? Is, it, is there any? Can we see sure. What you have, your, your bus looks like how you outfitted it. Yeah. No. Absolutely. We can uh, take a quick look yeah, in there. Yeah. Let's stock up my phone. Yeah. Birdman. Power. If you're looking for another novelty for your piece, the Birdman is over there. Really? Why do you keep doing that? <laughs> but he is. There's a fellow with the bird. Fellow with the bird. Oh, she with the bus okay. inside. Sort of like Jenny with the RV yesterday. All right. I mean, Jim's got all your saddle wear um, big models. Yeah. And, I, and I think it'd be nice to right. show. Ready? Great. Yeah. Yeah. Or are you, uh, we're good. Okay, well, I've been involved with horses my whole life, and uh, this was something I owned. A, uh, I guess one of the things that enabled me to redo this bus was I owned a construction company for 15 years before I started this, so I did all the work in here myself, the conversion work. Um, I got sick of the employees and all the all the headaches that went along with running a construction business and I had the opportunity to take this job as a manufacturer's rep and uh, I was real excited about getting this because it was something I could do where uh, I still had pretty much have the freedom to come and go as I please but uh, Circle Y, the, the company I sell for, is, got, is uh, the premier saddle and tack line in the industry and uh, it's a real good company to work for. Um, this is, of course, the bedroom, and there's a TV and a VCR and some different stuff back in there. Um, and then this is a closet. The closet door is either the bedroom door or the closet. And uh, a shower, and then there's a stool and a vanity over here. So it's uh, it's got a nice bathroom, walk-through bathroom, and then the kitchen area. I guess you'd call it a galley in a coach like this. Uh, tried to put in all the amenities that I would need. I got a trash compactor and, of course, a micro or microwave and then all the other appliances. So it's uh, pretty comfortable, easy to cook in. And uh, I like to cook, so I do cook most of my meals in here. You get when you're on the road a lot, you get sick of eating in restaurants. So uh, I enjoy cooking in here and doing my own thing. What's your favorite meal? Oh, my favorite meal. Boy, that's a tough one. I like pasta, so anything that has pasta in it, anything Italian, I love. <laughs> but, um, Do you have a horse, Jim? I don't at this at this point. I had uh, horses for many years, but because I'm on the road so much, uh, I don't have a horse. I do carry my saddle and all my stuff with me because uh, a lot of the customers that I deal with and a lot of my friends have horses, so I do still ride quite a bit. Uh, whenever I can, and uh, everybody always likes the Circle Y saddle guy to go go riding with them. So uh, it's pretty easy for me to find a horse to go riding with, which is nice. Um, the bus is somewhat of a horse. Yeah, no, it pretty much is. And then of course my bikes. I don't go anywhere without my bikes. I like to get a little exercise. So <laughs> because I can't bring a horse with me, I I like to mountain bike and uh, you know stay active when I can. Otherwise, it's a lot of sitting and a lot of driving. I put on about 65,000 miles a year, so it uh, pretty much keeps me keeps me rolling. I guess the favorite place I like I like to travel out west uh, in the Colorado, Wyoming, Montana area. Even though that's not my territory, um, I basically cover Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, the Dakotas, 
uh, but uh, I love Colorado. I love to ski, and I get out there whenever I can. I usually I try and get out there, you know, three, four, five, six times a year, and uh, go play in the mountains. So, All, always in the bus? Uh, most of the time in the bus, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a great way to travel, and then I don't have to buy any motel rooms or any and, and cook. I like to, you know, like I said, I like to cook, so uh, uh, I try to travel in the bus whenever I can. The bus does not like the mountains, though, but. Uh, um, you just got to take your time. That's a big belt buckle. Uh, is there a story behind the belt buckle? Well, that was uh, given to me for uh, a sales award for meeting, uh, meeting some quotas and uh, exceeding some quotas that the company had set for me. So it's kind of uh, um, special to me, I guess, because it was a, a goal that I had set for myself and, and attained. and. Uh, so it, it's uh, something that I enjoy wearing. I guess it. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's just a, be uh, a, a shot, of, you know, a, a shot of this tack. Because he mentions the tack and who he sells for. Yeah. I mean, it's called tack, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. This is tack. Yeah. Saddles. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister ne needle pointed me that pillow uh, two years ago for Christmas, and. Uh, I carry it in here because it kind of goes along with the motif. <laughs> but uh, it's something. I guess it took her quite a while to do it. So it's kind of special to me. My only sister. Have a good day. Hey, it was nice meeting off. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I gotta go to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks but, a million. Yeah, that welcome. was really nice. Yeah. And, um, oh, we're we're having a ball. You. I mean, this good. is really fun. Was there any other shots of the bus? Jim, what's the uh, business you work for? 